And we've been on the road for over a year now, and over the course of time, quite a few people have reached out and asked us about our towing setup. We do flat tow our Jeep behind our Class A motor home, so let's check that out. Yeah, so we've been dry camping here in Tonopah, Nevada for almost a week now and uh, they have a really, really nice dry camping. That's Bureau of Land Management area just off of 95, which is back here. No traffic noise, which is awesome. But anyway, you can see all of this, all of this area is all open for dry camping. I figured this would be a good time to check out our flat towing setup, uh, introduce you to what we use, and uh, I really like it. It's pretty simple, nothing really complicated which is even better for me. So let's take a look at this thing. And one thing I spent a lot of time doing before we hit the road full time was uh, researching what type of tow system I wanted to use for our Jeep. I knew we wanted to flat tow, so we had to find the vehicle that we could flat tow. And then I needed to find a tow bar that didn't require a separate braking system because most states require a braking system, also a emergency braking system along with that supplemental system. I knew I didn't want a separate system to have to go into the car that would have to connect either via hydraulics or electrics or air, whatever that was. So I did a lot of research and I finally came across this product from NSA uh, RV products out of uh, Iola, Kansas. And they have quite a few different models. This happens to be what's called the the Ready Break Elite. Uh, you know, super simple to, to attach to the RV like most of them are. But again, the great thing that I like about it and what really makes life easier for me is this integrated surge braking system. So here in just a minute, I'll connect this to the Jeep, which is just right over here. Super simple to connect. And uh, you know, the thing I like about it, again, I'll disconnect this and let this swing down out of the way. Again, what I like about this is this integrated surge brake system. So this lever, once this is hooked to a cable, and this cable will get hooked to a um, clevis on the Jeep, and this is what activates the braking system. So as the Jeep, as you, as you slow down in the rig, the Jeep will surge forward. This whole entire unit will slide forward. This lever slides up, as you can see this whole unit kind of sliding. That then activates this cable which pulls on the brake pedal. And I'll show you that set up here in a minute. Anyway, as this slides forward, you can see this whole mechanism activates, puts the brakes on in the Jeep, pulls the, the pedal on the Jeep, and also an indicator light on the dash uh, will light up. And I did have to install a separate cable, which is right here. This runs all the way, the length of the coach, up into the cab, and there's a LED on the dash, so that when this activates strongly enough, that light will come on letting me know that the brakes have been applied to the Jeep. Okay, here we are at the front of the Jeep. I mentioned just a minute ago that the cable from the surge brake lever on the tow bar connects here. As the Jeep moves forward, that surge lever moves up, pulls a cable that's connected to this. This then extends, and then the other end of this cable is connected to the brake pedal. And there's a conduit, flexible conduit, that I had to install that runs through the engine compartment through the firewall. That was uh, quite, quite a trick to get installed, but uh, got that done nonetheless. The base plates uh, also had to be installed, so the entire front of the Jeep had to come off. Uh, originally, in place of each one of these uh, connectors here, uh, were hooks. So those hooks came out. These base plates, uh, the base plates were installed, and then uh, these were uh, these just simply slip in like most do. And on the other side here. I installed the emergency breakaway cable again. That's installed with the flexible conduit that goes, uh, you know, through the engine bay and also connects to the brake pedal. And when this is activated, uh, if if this were if the Jeep were to, to break away for any reason, this would activate. This cable would pull out, and there's a mechanism in here that, that keeps that locked in place so that the brakes will stay locked. Here we are at the brake pedal inside the Jeep. You can see the two cables that are running through that conduit 
come up through the firewall and connect to this clamping system here so that when the brakes are activated normally, when the surge brake is activated anyway, this will pull down on the brake and uh, release it as, as needed. And the emergency cable that I showed you just a second ago, if that's activated, this will actually pull down, lock in place, and uh, you know, keep the brakes on so that the vehicle doesn't roll down the highway. You know, connecting this tow bar is not that difficult. I do it by myself sometimes. Most of the time I do it with uh, Shauna helping. One of the things I do firstly is I make sure that I line up the Jeep. The Jeep has kind of this little a concave portion in the hood. I make sure that I line that up pretty much in line with the uh, center line of the tow bar or the, the hitch here. Get that a uh, certain distance away from the, uh, the main arms here and then uh, hook those main arms up. So I'll show you how I do that. All right, once I have the Jeep into position, basically just release this uh, section of the tow bar, these arms, let them kind of come down to the ground like this. And you'll notice these two red levers. This is what locks these extension bars into place. So always, always make sure they're this, uh, this position like this. That way I can just rest one side up on top of that connector. Put that pin in, the locking pin, leave this in that position like that. Same on the other side. Just like that. Now, a couple of ways that these arms could be locked into place, and I've done this a few times, is I can get into the Jeep right now do a full extension, put it in reverse, extend these fully, then come back and lock these levers into place and that will lock these arms down. Just leave it like it is, put the transaxle into neutral, and then as we go to take off in the motorhome, do an S turn, and that will then lock each one of these uh, extension arms into place. Okay, I talked a little bit ago about the brake cable that connects between the Jeep and the surge brake arm. That just connects pretty simply with a clevis pin. I uh, will connect here onto this lever, and then with a the, uh, little carabiner type clip to the Jeep cable. Now this particular uh, braking system requires that there's uh, at least two inches of slack. So when this is, is installed, uh, there has to be a little bit of slack like this so that it's not constantly uh, you know, pulling on the brake pedal and uh, applying the brake. So it needs to be a little bit of slack like that. And again, this just connects right here onto the brake lever. Just like that. And then I showed you a minute ago also that emergency brake cable. So this is the cable that runs, you know, the length of the tow bar and connects uh, to the frame of the motorhome. And this gets connected onto this red ring underneath that I showed you a minute ago, just like that. And that just, just lays free like that, no problem. I got a zip tie up out of the way so it's not uh, dragging the ground. And uh, so the only thing left now are safety cables. And I have these uh, coiled safety cables, one on each side. So the safety cables get connected. They're coiled so they can be a little spring loaded. <laughs> so they get connected to the base plate connectors right there and right there. And that is pretty much it, with the exception of putting the Jeep into neutral. And I'll show you how I do that. Okay, 
Okay, so once I put this in reverse, I go through that uh, process of putting the transfer case in neutral, and that basically allows the transmission to free turn, everything free wheel, no problem. Uh, always have to be sure to do that, otherwise we'll be dragging this thing, uh, you know, with the wheels smoking down the, the, the highway. So that is pretty much it with this uh, Ready Brute Elite system. Uh, they do have an updated model. Uh, I think it's um, a little bit less expensive. I paid uh, somewhere around $1,300, if I'm not mistaken, for the entire setup, uh, which, you know, I think is pretty comparable to most systems that require a separate brake controller. Again, I just didn't want that. I uh, didn't want another piece of equipment to have to maintain and, and, you know, move around and manage and all that. So this system works great for us. It's really been flawless, except one occasion. We were coming out of South Dakota, if I recall correctly, and I'll put a link to the video up here. But uh, somehow this cable, I thought I checked it. I must have missed it. Um, somehow this cable got wrapped around the lever right here, and it applied the brakes and burnt the brakes up in the front of the Jeep. New brakes, rotors, um, yeah, to the tune of about a thousand bucks expensive mistake so from then on i've always made sure that this is free flowing there's no kinks nothing uh, you know holding it up or uh, impeding it from moving freely so a very important thing to remember With any system uh, you want to make sure that it's right for your vehicle this has a 10,000 i'm sorry 8,000 pound uh, towing capacity which is far more than this jeep this jeep is about uh, just under 5,000 pounds and, uh, you know, so far so good. Uh, it's fairly maintenance free. Uh, it's got a couple of grease points on the bottom that you grease here and over here to uh, lubricate this uh, shaft that comes in and out. And it's pretty much it. Uh, the only other real consideration you need to make when, you know, buying or, you know, designing a tow bar system for your coach and your vehicle is that you have to make sure that, you know, th these are as close to level as possible. I think the specifications from NSA RV products for their particular tow bar is no more than three inches above or below uh, horizontal. And the reason you want to make sure that you're as close to horizontal or level as possible is because if you are too high or too low, what that does is it allows the vehicle to come up and push or dive uh, when you brake. And that's a, that's a bad thing because it can do a lot of damage to your vehicle and not to mention your motorhome, put you out of control, all kinds of nasty scenarios. So, certainly uh, is something you want to make sure you investigate with your tow bar setup. And hey, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you like this product, I'll leave a link in the description of the video. Go check them out. I'm not affiliated with them whatsoever, just uh, like the product. And you can usually find them at a lot of uh, RV trade shows and, uh, you know, like at the Quartzsite Big Tent Show, FMCA shows, and things like that. So, uh, definitely a good product. Check them out. For those of you who don't already know, Family Motor Coach Association puts out an annual dinghy towing guide, a super resource for those of you who are looking to uh, to purchase a flat tow vehicle. Uh, they go back 10, 15, 20 years, I think. I'll leave a link uh, here in the video and also in the description. So check those dinghy towing guides out. You might have a vehicle that's already flat towable and don't know it. Uh, or they give you plenty of options to be able to go out and look for a flat towable vehicle for your coach. So hey, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, consider doing that. We'd be happy to have you along on our Lou crew. And until next time, see ya.